Hi everybody, welcome to Image Analysis with Brandy Jones. Image Analysis consists of three semesters, RAD 125, which is spring, 15 weeks, RAD 205, summer, which is 13 weeks, RAD 208, fall, and is 14 weeks. I have made a very nice calendar with all three semesters here so you can see all the projected dates that we will meet together for image analysis. Uh, the subject to change for the future semesters, but this semester is set in stone. Uh, you can find this on Brightspace. This is the image analysis course outline for RED 125. This can be found on Brightspace. We will primarily be using the radiographic image analysis book. However, we will be substituting information from bond triggers and as well. PowerPoint presentation and evaluation criteria. You will be assigned positions and projections for a specific date. You will see Brightspace for the schedule. Once you have your projection and positions, you're going to make a PowerPoint about them, your presentation, and PowerPoint will be on the select today that is on the schedule. Uh, you will provide a Word document of a written evaluation criteria. All three components equal 40 points. So be prepared to teach the class. Everyone must participate. There's no exceptions. This is the example of the image analysis presentation schedule, which you can find on Brightspace with all your classmates' names and then your part and projection that you will be doing and on which date you will be doing it on, presenting on. This is a sample of the image analysis grading form that I use. Uh, this will be used for your evaluation criteria, for your presentation, and your PowerPoint. Quizzes. You will have a quiz after each anal image analysis class. They will be worth 10 points and are usually 10 questions. Uh, they will open at the end of image analysis class and then close after one week. Review at home, positioning and anatomical placement and terms, your body planes and general terminology. Why image analysis? The purpose of image analysis is to teach the soon-to-be RAD tech how to evaluate projections for acceptability, to determine how to improve positioning and technical skills before repeating a projection. The skill to evaluate optimal and non-optimal images is key to a radiographer. Your image is vital to a patient's care and treatment, therefore knowing how to evaluate it is paramount. Why does a radiology technologist care about creating optimal images? Why be a technologist? Be proud of your work. We want your work to be recognized for your expertise. Rad Tech is a medical professional who provides minimal amounts of radiation to provide optimal images and excellent patient care to assist in care of the patient. If the radiologist cannot arrive to a conclusion or diagnosis, from the projections that you have provided, the radiologist must ask for repeats or recommend for additional procedures. Consider how accuracy and positioning and technical factors affect the diagnostic value of a projection. Chest procedures are one of the most commonly performed projections each year. The reviewer, you, the technologist, must consider all the normal variations that exist. Also, how they make with preventable positioning and technical error. Medical terminology. At the beginning of most of the chapters in your image analysis book, there is a list of terms, of key terms. You must review them and know them. Characteristics of the optimal projection. Characteristics of the optimal projection. The projection is displayed accurately. The demographic information, for example, patient and facility name, time and date, is visualized. The correct marker is in the appropriate position without superimposition of the values of interest. The desired anatomical structures are in the exposure field and are in accurate alignment with each other. 
there is maximum spatial resolution and radiation protection is present and was accurately used during the exposure. Characteristics of optimal projection continue. The image was given in was accurately produced without error. Adequate exposure reached the IR based on the ideal EI number. Contrast resolution identifies the subject contrast. Noise is minimal, including scatter and preventable artifacts. Image analysis process. After the projection is correctly displayed, it is evaluated for positioning and technical accuracy. The evaluation should follow a systematic approach to reduce the chance of missing important details. Each image must be evaluated for positioning and technical accuracy. Topics to analyze. Demographic requirements are visualized on the projection. The projection is accurately displayed on the monitor. Correct marker and placement. Appropriate collimation practices are evident. And anatomic structures are accurate for positioning. Each image must be evaluated for positioning and technical accuracy continued. Maximum spatial resolution, radiation protection, the histogram, adequate exposure, contrast resolution, no preventable artifacts present, the ordered procedure and indication for the exam has been fulfilled. Demographic requirements are visualized on the projection. Plus the x-ray order associated with the correct patient are the patient's name, age, or date of birth, and any kind of patient identification number visible, and are they accurate? Are the examination time and date visible and accurate? Facility ID requirements. Patient's name, the facility name, the age or birth date, the assigned MRN number, or session number, exam, time and date, an ID plate should not obscure anatomy. Projection displaying guidelines. Digital images are displayed on the workstation in the manner that they were obtained or after pre-processing a logarithm has been applied that changes how the projection is to be displayed. Patient and IR orientation. Choose the correct procedure logarithm projection on the workstation prior to the exam so it can properly display after exposure. Avoid placing extremities diagonally on the IR when possible. APPA projections for the chest, abdomen, shoulder, hip, vertebrae, and cranium. You will display as if the patient were standing in an upright position with the viewer and the patient facing one another. The right side of the patient on the projection is on the viewer's left side. The marker for the AP and AP oblique, right or left marker appears correct when the projection is accurately displayed if it was placed on the IR face up. For the PA and PA oblique, the right or left appears reversed as if it was placed on the IR face up. AP and AP oblique projections of the shoulder and hip, they should be hung as if they were facing you, erect, standing. The markers, the markers should be laterally. So take a look at this hip image. It should not be marked medially down at the bottom. Uh, preferably, it should be marked laterally at the top and the shoulder is good. AP, PA, oblique projections of the torso, vertebrae, and cranium. Mark the side down and the side closest to the IR, which would be the correct side. If the left is positioned closer to the IR, mark the left. If the right, then mark right. Vertebral column is used to divide the right and left sides. We have a few exceptions. 
SI joints, you will mark the elevated side. RAO, sternum, you'll mark the left side. Ribs, if collimated to one side, you'll use the affected side marker. Lateral projection, laterals of the torso, spine, and cranium, and chest, display the way it was taken. For example, the left side of the chest was closest to the IR, then display it that way. The exception to the rule is some facilities have you hang it backwards for chest only. Markers, right or left, is correct if placed on the IR face up. AP, PA, lateral decubitus projections for chest and abdomen. Display as if the viewer and the patient are facing each other. With one side that was down, remain down, and the side that was up, stay on the upside. This will depend on department protocol, of course. One, leave upright, like an anatomically correct erect abdomen, or two, horizontal, as if it were taken. Marker, the AP, your right or left is correct. For the PA, the right or left would be reversed. Axial shoulder and hip projections, the inferior superior axial shoulder and the axiolateral hip, you should mark anteriorly and display with the anterior side up. Extremities, for your fingers, hands, wrist, and forearm, you will suspend from the fingertips and mark laterally. Extremities of the elbow and humerus, you will display as if they were hung from the shoulder and mark laterally. Extremities of the toes, AP, and oblique foot, you will display like your foot is on the screen. You will hang from the toes Digits up. Marking, you should mark them laterally. Lateral projections, lateral foot, ankle, lower leg, knee, and femur. The patient is, go you're going to display as if the patient is upright or suspended upright. Display as if they were hanging from the hip. The marker, you will place laterally. X-ray markers. Lead markers are used to identify the correct right and left sides. Variations in standard procedure, timed procedures. Constructed of, they are constructed of lead, so they are radiopaque material that blocks the passage of X-ray. It is required for each view. Markers, as you can see, many different kinds and types. You have tech IDs. You have positioning markers, arrows, erect, decubitus, standing, weight-bearing, time, and etc. Radiopaque means can't penetrate, and they will be magnified on the tabletop or on the patient. Marker placement. Correct marker right and left or arrow is visualized on the projection and demonstrated an accurate placement. So let's talk marker guidelines. Is the marker visualized within the exposure field and is it positioned far away from the center of the field as possible? Avoid any area that could be covered up by a shield. Have specialty markers been added and correctly placed if applicable? Place the marker clearly seen without distortion and is it positioned so it does not superimpose the values of interest? Does the right and left marker correspond to the correct side of the patient? Place the marker directly on the tabletop or IR whenever possible in the face-up position. This will avoid distortion and magnification, prevents scatter radiation from undercutting the marker, and ensures the marker will not be projected off the IR. Do not place the marker directly on the skin. And are annotated markers correct? You should not be using annotated markers. 
marker placement for bilateral extremities. For bilateral hands, you would mark both sides. Knees, you would mark both sides. AC joints, you would mark both sides. Mark each image for digits and do not use bilateral exams for imaging purposes. Mismarking and post-processing. Annotation. Some facilities may allow post-exam annotation when a marker is missing or partially cut or burned out. If the marker is cut, add a post-processing marker next to it. The book says you may have to repeat if mismarked, and this could be institution rules as well. However, I would not find this a standard practice. Using your lead markers to assist with orientation, the markers will be alphabetically correct if placed on the IR the way the CR travels through the part or an AP or PA and oblique projections of the torso, spine, and cranium. PA erect chest x-ray turn markers backwards. It doesn't work with tabletop. Turn the marker upside down for a PA hand so the beam goes through the hand the same way the marker comes out reversed when displayed correctly. So the L will look like a backwards L. PA tabletop leave face up. On the previous slide, I was talking about the marker placement. Here's an example of the erect bucky and how it shows up and the tabletop and or screen, how it shows up. Collimation best practices. Appropriate collimation practices are evident. A general guideline is each projection should demonstrate a small collimated border. Some anatomy, for example, like chest, abdomen, T-spine, pelvis, femur, may require the whole 17 inches of the IR of the 14 by 17. You may collimate two-sided. Decrease radiation dosage by limiting the amount of patient tissue exposed. Are all of the required anatomy structures visible? Does the values of interest fill the workstation screen? Was the long axis of the part aligned with the long axis of the IR? Is the collimated border present on all four of the projections when applicable? Each projection requires the CR be centered to a particular location with adequate collimation. Tightly collimate within a half inch to one inch of the value of interest. Image analysis process. Rotating the collimator head. Rotating just the collimator head does not affect the alignment of the beam with the grid. Rotation of the collimator head should be avoided when using computed radiography because it may affect the exposure field recognition process. Overcollimation. Overcollimation results from clipping required anatomy on a projection. View the shadow of the part to make sure the anatomy is not cut. View past the part due to beam divergence. Tube part IR alignment. Are the collimated borders even? Does the CR enter the proper location? Is the tube centered and detented? Is the collimation only to one side? The view of the grassy shoulder centering is close to optimal. Using a collimation to determine the CR, the collimated borders on the projection can be used to determine the exact location of the CR placement by making an imaginary X on the projection by diagonally connecting the corners of the collimated border, the X will indicate the CR placement. As you can see, we are a little high on this particular grassy image. Collimation efforts, collimated field representation. Collimator light field on the patient versus the actual coverage of the IR. When the collimation is set to a predetermined 14 by 17 over the torso, the light on the torso does not represent a true length and width of the field size due to beam divergence. A thicker patient, um, the smaller the field size will appear on the torso's surface. Collimation. I have three examples here with some collimation 
Let's see which ones are good or not. Forearm. It appears to have adequate collimation. You can see both joints and the surrounding tissue. Lateral chest. You can see all anatomy is present and the collimation is acceptable. The lateral L spine. The collimation has been over collimated and needs to be repeated. The anterior portion of the vertebra are, have been cut off. Identifying anatomical structures. The relationships between the anatomic structures are accurate for the projection demonstrated. Are the relationships between the anatomic structures demonstrated as indicated in the procedural analysis sections of this textbook or defined by your imaging facility? When identifying anatomic structures, one must consider how the anatomy will appear different from the real object. Is the value of interest in the center of the projection? Was the CR centered to the value of interest? Does the projection demonstrate at least possible amount of size distortion? Does the projection demonstrate undesirable shape distortion? Are the joints of interest and or fracture lines seen as open spaces. All anatomy is required. Most routines are AP and PA and lateral. When joints are of interest, oblique projections are required as well as additional views depending on the anatomy and pathology, such as axials and tangentials. Evaluate these two images. The wrist appears to be everything is on with good collimation. Ankle. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing the base of the fifth metatarsal, which is a requirement for this image. Effect of CR on anatomic alignment. Center the CR to the center of the value of interest. Straight x-rays record anatomy at its truest. As it moves away from the CR in all directions, the x-rays report anatomy that diverges and exposes the IR at an angle. In this picture, you see a lateral knee. Is this CR correct? No. As you can see, AB beam is traveling a little bit superior than the joint, so it will close off the joint. Distance that structures are projected with an angled CR. Farthest from the center are projected the most distances. See the picture. When the angled CR or diverged x-rays are used, the anatomy will move in the direction in which the beam is traveling. A CR angle or divergence increases, the degree of anatomy movement will increase also. Assessing radiographic distortion. Radiographic misrepresentation of either the size or shape of the anatomic part is called distortion. You have two types of distortion, size and shape. Distortion is affected by OID and SID. OID, the less the better. SID, the further away, the less distortion. Part is not directly on the IR. Bones in a body don't sit flat. Structures are not flat. Skin, flesh, angles. CR is not always perpendicular. Axial projections. Size distortion. Size distortion is represented when all axes of the structure demonstrate an equal amount of increase in size over the real object. No structure is truly directly placed on the IR. No structure is flat, meaning the actual bone is not directly sitting on the IR. You have soft tissue and muscle mass and so on. Use the shortest OID, the longest SID feasible for the part to keep the size distortion to a minimum. Both axes ends of the, are the same distance from the IR. The effects of distortion. Look at this illustration. See how the bone ends at the fracture site look a little different in each radiograph. These different views result from differences in alignment of the CR, bone, and IR. 
OID, and SID. OID has a direct relationship with size distortion. As OID increases, size distortion and magnification will increase. As OID decreases, size distortion and magnification will decrease. SID. SID has an inverse relationship with size distortion. A long SID produces less size distortion. A short SID produces more size distortion. Distortion is an elongation. The shape distortion resulting from improper alignment of the image receptor. A simple fracture may go undetected due to shape distortion. Shape distortion, which equals elongation. Elongation has occurred when one of the structures or axes has, appears disproportionately longer on the projection than the opposite side. The least amount of elongation occurs when the CR is perpendicular to the part in IR. Image B, the tube is off-center, the left side is going to cause elongation. The right side is going to cause to look normal. The greater the off-center, the greater the elongation. Image C, the tube is off-center, angling across the patient causes distortion, which equals elongation. Image D, the tube is centered, the left side causes elongation, the right side is normal. The tilted IR equals elongation. More shape distortion. Foreshortening occurs. Foreshortening occurs when one structure axis appears disproportionately shorter on the projection than the opposite axis. Foreshortening occurs when the CR and IR are perpendicular to each other, but the part is inclined. E. Image E. The greater the incline, the greater will be the foreshortening. Tilt the part. The mandible is a good example of when it can be used as an advantage. Tilt and extend the chin and head. Obliquity and flexion. Patient obliquity and extremity flexion. No proper positioning. Patient obliquity re reference planes such as mid sagittal plane, mid coronal plane within the patient are to be aligned with the IR in some manner to produce optimal projections. Always use a reference plane to determine the amount of obliquity. Estimating the degree of patient obliquity, viewing the body, patient's body from the top of the patient's head. A. When the patient is in AP or PA projection, the reference plane is aligned, is parallel, a zero degree. B. When the patient is in a lateral projection, the reference plane is aligned perpendicular 90 degrees to the IR. C. For a 45 degree AP PA oblique projection, place the reference plane halfway between the AP and PA projection and the lateral projection. Don't assume a sponge will set the correct angle. Depending on how far under the patient the sponge is placed, it could be more or less. Extremity flexion. Projections require a precise degree of structure flexion to adequately demonstrate the desired information. Technologists need to estimate. Estimating the degree of joint or extremity flexion. A, when the extremity is in full extension, the degree of flexion is zero. B, when the two adjoining bones are aligned perpendicular to each other, the degree of flexion is 90. C, the angle found halfway between the full extension and 90 degrees is 45. Joint space demonstration. Joint spaces and fractures. For open joint spaces and or fractures, the part must be parallel. Failure to align this will result in closed joint spaces and or fracture visualization. A joint space demonstration. Keep the part parallel. Bony projection. Ways to recognize similar structures in size and shape when repeating radiographs for poor positioning. For example, using this knee. The poorly positioned left lateral knee projection. The medial femoral condyle can be distinguished from the lateral condyle on the lateral knee projection by locating the adductor tubercle. 
which is situated on the posterior aspect of the medial condyle. The anterior and posterior surfaces of the medial and lateral femoral condyles should be superimposed on an accurately positioned lateral knee. This projection demonstrates a half inch gap between them with the medial condyle positioned more posteriorly. To obtain an optimal lateral knee projection using patient positioning in this situation, the medial condyle needs to be rotated anteriorly 0.25 of an inch. As the medial condyle is rotated anteriorly, the lateral condyle will rotate posteriorly by equal distance as the amount of repositioning movement needed is only half of the distance between the two rotated structures. You can also use other bony anatomies such as the tib fib or the patella to decide if it's away or closer to the IR. How much correction is needed for an optimal image? Half the amount seen on the image. So if one inch is cut by half and move a half inch so you don't overcorrect. Magnified structures. Lateral chest, the right lung field will show you the increased magnification due to OID. The first image, the right side is more posterior. This is the most common way a chest is rotated. The second image, the right side of the anterior. You can use a gastric bubble to help you. Posterior ribs are best to determine. The side closest to the IR is smaller. The side farthest away from the IR is magnified and larger. Repeats for poor positioning. For difficult structures, similar in shape and size, use surrounding structures. Lateral or oblique wrist use the surrounding anatomy other than the carpals here. The second image is over rotated. Projection demonstrates maximum spatial resolution. When a small focal spot used when was and when it was indicated. Was the appropriate SID used? Was the part positioned with the least amount of OID possible? Does the projection demonstrate signs of undesirable motion or unhalted respiration? Maximum spatial resolution. The, the spatial resolution on a projection refers to the ability of imaging system to record sharp detail edges and distinguish small adjacent details from each other in a, in a projection. The geometric factors that affect the blur are focal spot and distance. Focal spot. You have a small focal spot that when selected, a smaller target on the anode will hit the cathode. A large focal spot it's like beam divergence, a larger shadow arrow, shadowing area creates a larger amount of penumbra, which equals lack of sharpness. You have two filaments in the x-ray tube. When you pick a small focal spot, it's a small filament. A large focal spot is a large filament. Double exposure versus motion. The image A is a double exposure. How can you tell? Look up top towards, you can see towards the right side of the clavicles, there's two clavicles. And then when you look down towards the ribs, you can see there's two sets of rib cages there. And the second image is motion. Radiation protection. Diagnostic imaging professionals have a responsibility to adhere to effective radiation protection practices to prevent the occurrence of radiation-induced non-stochastic effects by adhering to dose equivalent limits that are below the threshold of dose equivalent levels. Limit the stochastic effects to a reasonably reasonable level compared to with a non-radiation risk and in relation to society's needs, benefits gained, and economic factors. Radiation protection factors that should be evaluated to provide projections that can be obtained by the following. The ALARA, as low, as low as reasonably achievable philosophy, include effective communication. Was the exam explained to the patient? Was it clear, concise instructions given? 
immobilization devices or immobilization devices used to prevent patient motion when needed. Source to skin distance SSD was the minimal SSD of at least 12 inches maintained for mobile radiography. Pregnancy was the possibility of pregnancy determined on all females of childbearing age. Gonadal shielding is the gonadal shielding evident and accurately positioned when the gonads are within the primary beam and shielding will not cover the values of interest. Other good radiation practices include were radiation protection measures used for patients whose radiosensitive cells were positioned within two inches of the primary beam. Was the field size collimated tightly? Were exposure factors, KV, MA, and time, set to minimize patient exposure? If AAC was used, was the backup time set to prevent an overexposure to the patient? Are there anatomic artifacts demonstrated on the projection? Were personnel or family who remained in the room during the exposure given protective attire, positioned as far from the radiation source as possible, and present only when necessary as for the shortest time possible? Shielding. Here are two examples. The first image is gonadal shielding in the AP projection for female patients. And the second image is gonadal shielding in the AP projection for male patients. Shielding for the lateral spine. Use lead to cover from the ASIS to the coccyx area for good shielding on a lateral for all patients. Image histogram was accurately produced. Is the exposure indicator within the acceptable parameters for the system? Was the correct body part and projection chosen from the workstation menu? Was the central ray centered to the values of interest? Was the collimation as close to the values of interest as possible, leaving minimal background in the exposure field? Was the scatter controlled with lead, sheet, grids, tight collimation, etc.? If collimated smaller than the IR, is the VOI values of interest in the center of the projection and are all four collimation borders seen? Guidelines for producing optimal image histograms. Eliminate any removable artifacts. Set the correct technique factors for the projection. Choose the correct procedural logarithm, body part, and, and projection from the workstation menu. Center the CR to the center of the values of interest. Collimate as closely as possible to the value of interest, leaving minimum background in the exposure field. Control the amount of scatter reaching the IR, grids, collimations, lead sheets. Adequate exposure reached the IR. Were the technical factors of MAS and KVP appropriately set for the projection? Is the EI number attained? at the ideal level or within the acceptable parameters of the digital system. Does the projection demonstrate quantum noise? Is there a decrease in contrast and detail visibility caused by scatter radiation or fogging? Was a grid used and recommended? And if so, was the appropriate grid ratio and technique used for the grid? Are the grid and line artifacts demonstrated? Was the correct SID used for the exposure set? Was the OID kept to a minimum? And if not, was, were the exposure factors adjusted for the reduction of scatter radiation when applicable? If collimation was significantly reduced, were the technical factors adjusted for the reduction in the scatter radiation when applicable? Was the exposure adjusted for additive or destructive patient conditions? There are some more exposure indicator parameters that you might see and can use in clinical. Density. You should see soft tissue and bony trabecula. Controlling factors are MAS, over versus underexposed, repeats and adjustments, overall blackening. Contrast resolution is optimal for demonstrating the values of interest. If the projection is less than optimal but acceptable, does the windowing allow the value of interest to be fully demonstrated? If the projection is less than optimal but acceptable, does the alternate procedural logarithm improve contrast 
resolution enough to make the projection acceptable. Contrast, difference in densities, the controlling factor is KVP, the scale of contrast is long versus short, and the KVP, KVP guide technique chart fixed KVP adjusting MAS with measuring the size of the part. Some contrast examples, an AP oblique projection of the foot. The first oblique image of the foot is a gray and a long scale contrast. The second image of the oblique foot is a short or high contrast. Lead shield placement and the effect on contrast. So the first image in the A lead strip was not placed and you can see it could use some better image contrast. The second image was placed with a lead piece of strip behind the patient as you can see on the image and it is much better, it cleans up the scatter. Compensating filters. The thick end of the filter goes over the thinnest part. It's not really used with digital anymore. Anode heel effect. The thicker portion of the part is placed over the more intense cathode end. Not really used any longer with digital. Penetration. Cortical outlines should be seen. You should see the spine through the heart shadow. The controlling factor is KVP. Image number one is overpenetrated. An easy way to tell is if the intervertebral discs are very clear, clearly seen in the image. Underpenetrated if the intervertebral disc are not seen in the image. Over versus under. Uh, image number one is a good exposure. Image number two is an example of an overexposed exposure. And image number three is a underexposed exposure. Automatic exposure control. An AEC system is a tool available on most modern radiographic units to assist the radiographer in determining the amount of radiation exposure to produce a quality image. It was never intended to be used on all types of examinations. It, it is a system used to control consistently the amount of radiation reaching the IR by terminating the length of exposure. Area of interest must be centered over top of the phototimed cells. AEC device determines the exposure time and the total exposure that is used. Artifacts. A artifact is a undesirable structure or substance recorded on an image. Anatomical, any anatomical structure that could have been removed. Internal, within the patient, cannot be removed. Example, pacemaker, iron rod, or hardware. External, outside the body. Example, jewelry, dentures, hairpins, monitor leads, equipment. IR is backwards or the grid. Preventable artifacts. In image one, the chest, a necklace. Image two, a shirt that says muscle written on it. No preventable artifacts should be seen or present on any projection. Are, are any artifacts visible on the projection? Can the artifact be removed? What is the location of any present artifact with respect to the palpable anatomical structure? Have you asked the patient about non-removal artifacts, origin, surgical implants, foreign body? Does the projection have to be repeated because of the artifact? Can the artifact be removed? And have you asked the patient about any non-removable artifacts? Non-removable artifacts. For example, in image one, a pacemaker. Image two has a pick line. And image three is ORAF of the ankle. What type of artifact? What type of artifact? This is a equipment artifact. The IR is backwards.
what type of artifact was present. There is an external artifact, the ring, and there is an anatomical artifact, which are the hands. What type of artifact? Anatomical, the scapulas are in the lung field. Also, metallic fragments are seen on this image. You have a couple near the right, uh, second and third uh, rib that's easily seen. And there's a few more down on the left side, maybe around 10th um, rib. What type of artifact? Hopefully this is not seen. Uh, this is something that um, doesn't really happen with digital. This is a uh, double exposure, so it would be equipment. Um, there is an AP L-spine image and a lateral L-spine image on top of each other on this. What type of artifact? Equipment. This is a double exposure. You can easily see one stomach and then a second stomach. And then you can also look down and see other anatomy if you follow it down. What type of artifact? Equipment, a double exposure again. However, I feel like this is more of a blurring um, than it is a double exposure, but it says it's a double exposure. What type of artifact? External. There is printing on the sweatpants. There also is an IM rod, which is an internal artifact. And then there is something further down, maybe on the tibia, fibula, maybe part of the sweatpants, or it could be the brace of some kind. What type of artifact? Internal. Batteries that were either ingested or inserted. What type of artifact? This is something that's not really seen today. This artifact is equipment. It's a static artifact. Um, usually happens in winter when it's dry. Uh, why does it show up black and not white? Because the light spark usually pull the film um, out of the bin quickly, and you would hear and you would get like hear a snap and like a spark, um, and this would create the static, and this is the effect that it would show. What type of artifact? This is also something that you really won't see today. Um, this is equipment. It's a roller tank scratches. Uh, they're going across the whole pelvis there. What type of artifact? Equipment and external. So the lead on the chest is external. It could be temporarily removed. Um, however, the lines going across our grid lines, and that is equipment. What type of artifact? Internal slash anatomical. Do you see the baby that is upside down in the pelvis? You see the head in the right near the pelvic ring and the spine coming up the right side there with the legs going across the belly. What type of artifact? A little tricky. Uh, is this inside or on top? Uh, not sure. Would need a lateral to confirm. Uh, we're going to say it was left inside the abdomen. So that would be a um, internal. Grids. These are a few images. Um, and the type showing the types of grids that were used today. 
Um, number one is a grid, and here the grid lines are going to run from right to left across that grid there. Number two is a, a linear grid, and that's found in your table, Bucky. Number three is a linear focused grid, and that's usually um, most of our grids today that we're using. Four is a crisscross grid, which um, may be seen in specials. Grid screw ups. Um, a is actually the correct positioning of your tube and grid and patient. Um, the rest are the grid screw ups. So this is how you get grid lines if you have them positioned with any of these. So B, the grid is upside down. Uh, C, the grid is angled, it's crooked. Number one, the CR is angled. Um, going across the grid crosswise. Number two, the CR is angled and so is the um, grid. And three, the um, CR is coming down and it's off center to the grid, all causing grid lines. Okay, everybody, the end.